what what uh, what spurred you to start doing that particular kind of activism versus say any other subject or any other way? Uh, the fact that you, you decided to do flat Earth activism on yeah. the street interviews, and you have like a really unique style that you've created um, with right, different right, right. Prop, <laughs> props and pictures and like uh, right, questions right. that you ask. How did you come up with that? Yeah, so it actually it actually didn't plan it. It actually just happened, you know, little by little. So ever since I came across this subject, obviously, you know, your channel in 2016, right? I was always trying to like think of a way like, oh, how can I simplify this, right? So I can present it to people, right? I always had this thought in my head, like, I need to simplify it because all these equations, all these mathematical, you know, explanations, like most the average person is not really going to get it, right? Because I even had a hard time understanding it myself when I first came across this, right? You know, especially with all the brainwashing, right? So, so it's, so I was just thinking, you know, since 2016, like, oh, there has to be a way to simplify this, right? That you could teach it to, to, to children, right? Um, because it's, it's, you know, self-evident, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously after finding out about this lie, you know, I got into, I got into veganism, obviously watching um, Stop Eating Your Friends, um, the video that you put out. Oh, cool. And watching vegan activists um, is actually what kind of like triggered, you know, this, you know, the idea of, of how I present it. So, you know, how vegan activists, you know, usually they have a question with a table, right? Kind of yeah. like to get people to come to them. Right. Um, the only thing is that I, you know, that I changed was because, you know, how Flat Earth has a bad, you know, reputation in the mainstream and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, so I was thinking, you know, maybe I need to get people to come to me without knowing where it's going to lead, right? Mm. So, so that's where I got the idea of asking a question first, just to start a conversation, watching, you know, other activists do it. Right. Um, and then little by little, you know, I, you know, I started off with the, with the water level question by itself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, you know, just, just thinking, you know, just contemplating, you know, the next question that came to me, I remember watching the vegan, the vegan uh, documentary, the Stop Eating Your Friends. I remember there was a guy in there that did a presentation to, to a classroom and he started off with the circles. Mm. Like, oh, there's two circles, a blue and a red. I'm pretty sure you remember. Yep. Um, and, he, and, he, and he asked them, oh, one of them's slightly bigger than the other one, you know. And the experiment was, you, you know, obviously they're the same size, but the experiment was that he was, by just telling that simple lie, he was almost able to get everybody to raise their hand to think either it was the red one or the blue one. There was only a couple of people that didn't, right, that didn't fall for the trick because it was a trick question. They were about the mm. same size. So it just kind of like shows that even though something is in front of you and clearly, you know, obvious to you, just because someone tells you otherwise, you're going you're gonna to believe that, right? It's most it's likely. amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. you so see the like, people in your videos, they're like second guessing themselves and third guessing yeah. themselves and asking yeah. you questions. And yeah, you're, you're really exposing the appeal to authority right there. Because exactly, at first, yeah. everybody knows what they see. It's clear that they're looking at two equal sized circles or what have you. Right. But then just at the suggestion of a stranger, you're not even a real authority in their eyes right. or anybody else's. Right. You're, you're just <laughs> a stranger true. who says to them that, no, actually, one of them is bigger than the other one. You know, one's smaller. And then at that at that slight suggestion, they're, you know, what was it, maybe 90% of the people right. change their answer and decide that, oh yeah, okay, uh, the one on the left is bigger, right? Right, yeah, 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 it's the one on the left. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, you're, you're exposing human nature, it, it, which is uh, what Flat Earth has really done for me, because it's more so than just, you know, the shape of the Earth. It's right. really exposing human psychology and so many yeah. facets of it. And that's just right, one, right, right. one facet of it that, that you, you expose constantly with pretty much every uh, every person that uh, looks at your circles. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, yeah, so from the circles, um, I actually was, you know, just, again, I do a lot of thinking, you know, I pace a lot, you know, so I, I do a lot of thinking, especially at night, you know, when I can't sleep. Um, and then the the second question that I ask, um, well, before the second question, I think I, 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 uh, I came up with the photograph or painting one. Mm -hmm. So it's the same concept, kind of, but instead of the two circles, it's two images, right? Right. So I show these two images and, and they're both paintings, right? But they look so realistic that, you know, I tell the people that one of them's a photograph and one of them's a painting. So again, 
they go to the trusting authority or again <laughs> a random guy on the street right <laughs> and they believe me and they automatically assume that one of them is a photograph right and sometimes they assume they're both photographs which you know which it's one of the main reasons why i asked that question because i expose how just believing someone opens the door to being deceived because you know, obviously most of the people believe me and they pick one right that, that, that that's a photograph and this one's a painting so obviously you know they trust me and then the the second reason is um so they can't trust the images because they sometimes they think they're both photographs so they do think it's a trick question but they think they're both photographs but they're actually right. both paintings which leads me to the second point which is we can't trust images we want to determine something is real you know because obviously images can be fake you know so that's and another then, good um, choice so because those yeah, two yeah, images yeah. that you use like morgan freeman or whatever they were they look so realistic that neither one yeah. of them really looks like a you know, a painting, a painting yeah. of whether a digital, because one of them is a digital painting and one of them yeah. is like an, an actual a oil hand. painting. Right. But yeah, yeah. They, they look so realistic, which again, you know, these globe earth images, they have gotten better and better over the years to the point that, yeah, a lot of them are ultra realistic and not right. just the globe earth, but you know, the other globe planets that the, they show us from the Hubble telescope and the James, the new James Webb images and everything. And uh, even to a trained eye, it can be difficult to discern between an actual photograph and a CGI construction, a complete digital construction. They're that good now. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. No, yeah. And um, so I basically replaced the circle one with the with the picture one because obviously, you know, it's the same logic behind them, right? You shouldn't mm. just believe someone based on, mm. you know, on their word alone. Um, and then the, and then I get into the second question. Obviously, I have three questions uh, when I do this. And the second question, obviously, has to do with water, and how mm. waters, you know, always finds the lowest point. In other words, it always goes down, right? That's a yeah. fact. You know, when you have a water bottle of water, the water is always going to be, it's always going to go down. You know, that's a, that's a fact. So once people, you know, I show the two images, and once people agree, you know, pick one right, you know, they they feel a little bit more confident now. Like okay, like I, you know, I. I I get this. It's pretty simple, right? So once I, you know, once they get that one, the second one with the water, you know, the direction of water, then I bring in water level, right? Because everybody knows what level means, right? And when water finds its level, everybody knows, you know, what that means. Mm -hmm. So this is the third question, which is actually the one that I started with originally, but eventually, you know, little by little, I, you know, I started adding these other questions. But yeah, this third question now is the A and B question, um, and I asked them which one represents level, and obviously one is straight. And then one is curved, right? The a is straight and B is curved. And everybody picks A, unless they're trolling. And they know they're trolling, you know? <laughs> the, the funny thing is that they've been trolled. That's the irony <laughs> behind that, right? <laughs> so, so, so sometimes they say, oh, the answer is B, but obviously they're trolling. But, but once I tell them, well, you know, obviously the answer is A, right? And then once I bring in the subject, um, as in like, oh, we were all tricked to believing, you know, that, that level means curve, even though we know it's straight. And then I ask them, you want to know why? And then they say, yeah, and I tell them, do you believe the earth is a ball? I mean, you could just see the expression on their face at that point, like, oh, damn, like, you kind of got me, right? <laughs> That's kind of what they're thinking, I'm assuming, but, you know, but at that point, once they get, you know, once they agree with me about what level means and how water behaves, and obviously they pick the correct answer, once I bring in the, the subject about the ball earth, it's when it's like, you could kind of see their, their, their mind kind of like, you know, it's like, they don't even know what to say, <laughs> basically, mm. you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I start explaining to them how NASA, obviously, you know, they tell us the radius of the Earth, because obviously they supposedly have satellites orbiting, right? So so they need to know the distance they're traveling, right? With all mm. this GPS, right? And all this. Um, so, yeah, I, I present, you know, the 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 curvature formula that they tell us and, and obviously how the water should be bending, you know, at the mm -hmm. rate that they're telling us. And... Um, the funny thing is that most people would say like, oh, but the but the curve is it's just so minute, right? You you can't see it. But once you get them to like agree, okay, then. But then but then but then at the same time they'll say they they'll see boats going over the the horizon, so it, they contradict themselves already, you know. So it's just you know it's just crazy to you know to 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 actually see the, you know human psychology how they try to defend their bias when contradicting themselves, you know what I'm saying? And I see that right. a lot in veganism as well. You know, people oh, yeah. are against animal abuse, for example, but then at the same time, they'll contradict themselves, right? But, but, um, but yeah, you know, that's, it's just little by little, you know, just these questions came to me and, 
And yeah, the way I present it now, I feel like it's very effective. And a lot of most, if not all people understand it. Now they right. could be in denial. That's up to them. But if you ask me, they understood it, you know, but the cognitive dissonance is just, it's just too strong in some people, you know, especially in the universities where they try For to, sure. like, you know, defend the globe, you know. Right. But, um, and, and so uh, most people will get to that point and then they're a bit flabbergasted. What about right. the people that have, you know, really gone through the heliocentric globe indoctrination and they they know your little gotcha moment and they say, oh, no, well, uh, you know, Earth is uh, locally level, but uh, globally uh, it's curved. And so, you know, like you said, some of them that, oh, it's it's just too big and you can't see it. And, that, and that's what it that's what it is. Um, so they will tell you that level literally means curved. And so right. they have a, a new definition of level that the globe has created, which means equal distances from a center point. So if right. the globe, uh, you know, if you're looking at a 90 degree curve, it's got equal distance from this assumed center point. So they assume to a globe. To the outer circumference, yeah. Right. They assume a globe, they assume the center point, and then they say, well, it's, you know, there you go, that's level. But then right. they say that the globe is actually an oblate spheroid. So <laughs> exactly. suddenly that doesn't work because now it's smushed. And then uh, they say it's a pear-shaped oblate spheroid uh, with the bigger southern equator. And so suddenly this new definition of level that means curved and equidistant points, well, it doesn't even work on their pear-shaped oblate sphere globe, does it? <laughs> So right. what, what would you, <laughs> that, that might be the, the line of, uh, of answer I'd, I'd take to, to tell them, but what would you say to somebody that says, well, oh no, you're trying, to, you're trying to get me there? No, see, level actually means curved and gravity curves the <laughs> oceans. So what do you right. say to these people that think that level means curved and right. gravity is curving the oceans? We just can't replicate that uh, on, a, on a scale that, you know, small enough for us to do ourselves. Yeah, well, what I would say is, first of all, obviously gravity, I would tell them, um, gravity is obviously a theory. I don't know if you knew that. I usually tell them that, like, I don't know if you knew, but gravity is actually a theory, meaning they haven't actually measured a force, you know, pulling anything down or out. Mm. You know, it's just a measurement uh, of speed, what they measure, right? 9.8 meters per second, per second. So, um, and then I would say, uh, if you believe the earth is actually level, then that means, I mean, that, that level means curve, uh, then that means, every lake on earth that's miles across should be displaying this curvature so technically if the curve is there we should be able to physically measure it mm. so that's when they 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 have to accept that like because i so, so if, if the curve is there or we could see the curve we should be able to measure it and, and everybody agrees with that you know even global believers mm. um and at that point is is when i bring in the 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 physical level structure experiment over a body of water you know like mm. a lake mm -hmm. and um and again, once you, when you show the slides, when you actually show the like the images of of this experiment or or what it should be, right, curving, it's like it's simplified um, for them. You know, it's very elementary. You know, um, yeah. the concept of, of water bending, right? Right. So when I tell them that it should be physically measurable, you know, that's when they're, they're you know they don't really argue it much after that. They start bringing in mm -hmm. like stories from the past, like oh, you know, they already figured this out. You know. 2000 years ago they did an experiment with shadows they start bringing in others other topics at that point right they try to avoid so they that divert that. basically they're not answering your question and they want to jump to some other thing that they think proves it instead exactly you that? they, that's they another that, one you that hear in, in yeah. veganism as well the second you corner them with one of their excuses they just jump to yeah. the their next excuse on the on the rolodex there's like 30 yeah. or 30 or 40 i found with with the flat earth and veganism it's about the same there's about 30 to 40 common excuses that you just hear mm -hmm. over and over again and if you just have uh, stock answers to those 40 things uh, eventually they'll just run out of, of anything to yeah. say um, yeah. and walk away <laughs> and yeah. hopefully exactly. hopefully you've yeah. planted a seed depending on the, the type of person that they are that seed will yeah. either rot or um, you know in time will blossom and a lot of those people love will you know take it to heart uh, the key element I've found, though, is time. Everybody needs right. time. Like, nobody can just be presented with 
any of these kind of subjects, be it veganism, flat earth, or other other big subjects or conspiracies, and then just that moment that you're presenting it to them, accept it and be like, you know what? You're <laughs> right. That's true. Right. And and it's almost fine. That's fine because that would be a bit too quick. Don't you think if people were oh, yeah. that quick to just <laughs> flip mode their, their, their entire belief structure, everything they've known? So in, in it's a, actually, in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually fine that it takes time. It's just disconcerting sometimes to uh, to flat earthers or vegans that are constantly trying to, to talk to newbies and at the end of every single conversation you feel like you haven't done anything at all but uh, right, right well with the key yeah, element actually, of time you find that you have you really have no oh, yeah yeah actually um when i started doing this um i actually uh, i was well aware of that that mm-hmm. i'm i mean i like to think i'm a fast learner and even it, even, even it took me like two three months to actually accept this you know i was a huge space junkie you know i believe everything about outer space i will show my friends alien videos that supposedly that you know they were filming you know right Mm -hmm. um so so yeah i know that people you know they're not gonna uh, accept this right away so my goal is just to plant seeds you know like you said and hopefully you know they do blossom and and people understand it because this is a journey that basically it's personal everybody you know has their own journey at that you know at the end of the day so it's it's up to the individual to figure it out because if you expect truth to be told to you then you're already wrong because mm. you have to figure out the truth if you ask me the truth can not just be told because even if the truth was told to you you have to understand it you know you can't just hear it and that's it oh it sounds sounds good right it's mm. all about understanding so so yeah understanding takes time especially with all the programming and all the brainwashing you know, it's only obvious that, you know, it is going to take time. And some people learn faster than others. That's another thing. You know, some people are really stubborn, you know, and some people are a bit more open. So, mm-hmm. but either way, like you said, it's going to take time. You know, this, 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 this is something that can't be rushed, you know, yeah. especially, you know, how, how huge it is, you know, the lie, how, how mm-hmm. huge the lie is. And then how every, you know, different avenues, you know, you got NASA, you have, you know, all these different organizations, government, schools, you know, all telling you that it's a globe, you know, and, and, all, and people have, you know, they have faith in these institutions because they believe that they're for the benefit of people, you know, especially government. So they'll never think twice, you know, to question them, you know, and I, and I can speak from experience because before all this, you know, before 2016, before I found out about it, I was, you know, I was a square myself, you know, I believed everything the government said. You know, I, I would question people that would question the government. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, how people question me now when mm-hmm. I expose the government, I would do the same, you know, when I'll hear conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I wouldn't even take them serious. Like 9-11, I believed all that, like, you know, mm-hmm. that, it just, that airplanes crashed. And then people that question that, I would, I would be like, are you serious? <laughs> You're actually questioning the airplanes hit? Like, so I was, I was in the program, I mean, I, from, you know, I can, I can only speak from experience, you know, so. So was I'm well flat, aware. Was yeah. Flat Earth actually one of the first conspiracies you looked into? It, it was actually the first one, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, and then being a space junkie, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that, again, I like to think I'm, I'm open-minded and, and a fast learner. I think, I think those were, like, two traits that kind of helped me break through the brainwashing kind of quicker than others, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you know, it just completely changed my life after that, realizing that lie open the door to all the other lies as well you know what i'm saying because mm-hmm. this is the biggest lie you know you know by far if you ask me obviously there's other lies you know big lies but this is the one that unlocks kind of like your mind to look at uh, other stuff going on as well right you know so i so when people like say oh flat earth is not a conspiracy theory look to look uh, worth looking into you should look at you know 9 11 or look at the free man movement or stuff like that and it's mm-hmm. like well you're skipping a vital step you're skipping the fundamentals of our existence. Like, right. if, you know, if you skip, it's like, it's like a, a grown man that still believes in Santa Claus, mm-hmm. but yet they're trying to like, they're trying to make their life better, you know, you know, but, but if they still believe in Santa Claus, like how, how, how logical are you really? You know what I'm saying? Who told <laughs> right. you that lie? You know, and yeah. what else Something are you going to believe so from fundamental. this person? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Right. Yeah. You're trying to be an adult, live your adult life. 
uh, have yeah. a wife, have kids, but you still believe in Santa Claus? Like, how are your kids exactly. going to respect you when they find out about Santa Claus? Is your, how's your <laughs> wife going to think? Uh, yeah, how's, how's your boss going to think when uh, when he finds out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, the only is, difference is, is that, like that. Yeah. Though people think it's the opposite. It. At the yeah, point yeah, at yeah, now, yeah. it's like if you're a flat earther, that's like believing in Santa Claus right now, right? We haven't, exactly. we haven't quite switched it over. Nowadays, if your boss finds out you're a flat earther, oh, that might be means for dismissal, you know, even though yeah. in reality, we're absolutely correct, you know, and, and it's provable. And that's what we're trying to bring to people with these experiments and demonstrations. And that's what the globe, unfortunately, doesn't have. And that's what people need to understand. It, rather than trying to prove to yourself that the earth is flat, just go back to uh, elementary school and prove to yourself that it really is a globe. Do you have anything besides these pictures and testimony from astronauts and you know uh, things that you were taught in your grade school books about uh, pendulums right. or Coriolis effect? Because right, right. the flat earth uh, research, the books, the documentaries, there are answers out there for all of these things that you think don't have answers for. And they've been there for centuries. Flat Earth information has been absolutely suppressed and censored, whereas this heliocentric globe model has been propagated, uh, you know, exclusively in the education system. You don't. There's no, no time given to flat Earth other than perhaps to say that it was like the Wikipedia banner that'll be under this video that says that it was a outdated, archaic subject, and you know it's been disproven and blah blah blah. And moving along, here's the reality: you're on this spinning globe in a magical universe that was created by nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, again, the globe obviously contra always contradicting this, obviously with the redefining of level and, and saying that it's an oblate spheroid, right? That it's a contradiction on its own, but also with the with the Big Bang Theory that we came from nothing, you know, the, the first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot right. be created nor destroyed, right? That debunks the Big Bang. So again, they're just debunking themselves, you know, making all these contradic the co contradictory claims, you know what I'm saying? But people are not paying attention, right. you know? And again, it just shows that people, people just don't care, you know? And, and you gotta ask yourself, why? Why don't people care? And it's because they're ignorant to, to the true self of who they really are and what this place actually is. And that's what people are missing. You know, the, that's that's the key, if you ask me, to freedom, to actually know who you are. You know what right. I'm saying? Because if you believe something you're not, then who are you really, right? Yeah, who, who this are you is playing? so fundamental. Yeah. It's such, such a foundational thing. It's where we are. You know, what is this place? Are there limits to it? You know, how is the perimeter exactly. set up? What's the middle? What's in the middle? Why do all compasses point to the middle? Why does that one central star that never moves, why is that directly over the middle? What's happening over there? These are concepts that have actually been removed by turning the Earth into a globe. Because once the Earth is a globe, suddenly there is no center point or perimeter because it's a sphere. All points are the same. So if there was some significant point uh, in, say, Antarctica around the perimeter of the flat Earth, or say at the North Pole, at the very center point of the flat Earth, you've just effectively gotten rid of those points of significance and made every single point on Earth equally insignificant by making yeah. it a sphere. Right. So isn't that, that's another possible reason for why, you know, why, why would they lie about this? Why would they say right. the Earth's flat when it's not? Well, right. you know, animals, when you try to keep them in a pen, the first thing they do is find the edge of it and then try and find a way out and see what's beyond it. If right. our reality is that way and there's people trying to keep us in a pen, then what's, you know, one great way to keep people away from the outer limits of the pen is to fool them into thinking that there is no such thing. On a ball, there right. is no perimeter, there is no outer limits. So suddenly that's not an interesting venture, especially if you tell them how cold it is and dark and, and put a government treaty disallowing anything but penguin tours there. Suddenly exactly. almost nobody is going to try and see what's at the perimeter. No, exactly. So another way of saying it too is obviously Earth has a point of reference, which is the North. That's a point of reference. On a globe, there's no point of reference. It'll be the center, which is imaginary. Mm. So you know what I'm saying? So the globe obviously you know takes that point of reference 
out of your mind and it just becomes insignificant, you know, what the North is exactly, you know, on a globe perspective, the especially when theory of, sorry, the theory of relativity also does that exactly, with reference yeah. to where we are and everywhere else that supposedly exists in the universe and gives it all yeah. equal relevance and says, oh, you can't tell if you're stationary or moving because everything else is moving as well and we yeah. don't know which is which, <laughs> maybe everything's moving, yeah. So they've got all these little theories that take away your common, because common sense says, no, we're stationary. I'm, I'm clearly not moving, and everything else in the sky is moving. That's our reference frame. But then you can theorize relativity, and then that takes away your common sense, and now suddenly, oh, it could be could be this way instead. Yeah. The, the globe model all, to, do, yeah. to do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, are, they literally want us lost physically and psychologically. So right. that's where all these theories come in, you know, they just, they just want people lost. Again, if you're lost, um, you're going to be more easily controlled. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's only, it's only obvious. You're going to look for people that you think, you know, know the way, right. Or, or know, know what, you know, what, what, what should we doing, you know, but that's, that's what religions do. Again, mm -hmm. it all comes back to the self, you know, you should live life how you, you know, would want to live your life, you know, but again, a lot of people think that this is how we're supposed to be living because that's what we were born into. You know, we were born into this government and we were born into having to work just to have basic necessities like food, water and shelter, which is where most of people's you know earnings go to. Eighty percent of, of, of the average person here in the States, at least, you know, goes just for the basic necessities. And if that doesn't say you're being fucked, like, I don't know what else, you know what I'm saying? Like. Right. You know, that, that's, that's slavery right there, <laughs> literally. <laughs> isn't that something that's been creeping up too? Because like in my grandfather's time, he had five kids on a single income and he was able to afford his own house. They had a car at a decent living. And then you move to my father who had one kid, me, and a wife. And, you know, he was still managed to do single income and they have a house and a car but they had a bit less to, to deal with and they, they were a bit more strapped, say, than uh, grandpa's generation. And then now my gen, now me, I, I have no de no kids and not feeling like I could really support them. I don't own a house. I don't own a car. <laughs> like, right, uh, right. Do, do I think the, the banking system and inflation and uh, fractional reserve banking and the way that they uh, meet out money, they just create it out of thin air it has slowly enslaved the average man and woman over time in this way, like back in my grandfather's day, probably, you know, it was still happening. That was, right, you know, right, fractional right. reserve banking was going on. This process was, was happening. It's just, it was early on. It was just after the world war, you know, they were coming out of the depression, which again, the federal reserve started that was like it's like they they went into overdrive when the federal reserve kicked into gear in the the early 1900s they went too right. far too fast and so now right. they've been they've done the exact same thing but much slower this time and now right. in 2023 we're basically in the first you know stages of like the great depression or uh, exactly uh, recession rather uh right. coming to what could be uh something greater than the great depression so uh, they're clearly doing this. It's like their second run through and now they're doing it slowly. And it's like the frog in the pot rather than just going all, all in at once. If you just slowly boil it, then nobody seems to notice. Nobody can really rebel. You're just slowly enslaved to the point that you accept it. Kind of like a right. Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome thing. You're just okay, I guess, I guess I'm going to identify with my captors now and, and accept this increasingly yeah. shitty society and lifestyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the way I see it, like an economy, if you ask me, not only should it be optional, if you ask me, because an economy for me is something that should be there for your wants. It should never be there for your needs, if you ask me again, because mm. if you start relying on an economy for your needs, then mm -hmm. you're relying on you know, something like you're you're adding like a middleman in a way, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'll, and we all know a middleman is always gonna get a cut. <laughs> <laughs> so and then especially in this society, they get a big cut, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like that's that's one of the how you know how they keep people down. Um, but if you ask me, the, an economy, the government is the the main middleman, right? I mean, in exactly, most yeah. situations. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so they're unnecessary, obvious, right? Yeah, they're unnecessary, unnecessary. Most of this money that goes to schools, which is pointless to me, if you ask me, you should you should teach your kids. You you have the responsibility to 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 teach your kids, you know, everything that they should know because you brought them into this world. You know, that's nobody else's responsibility. The fact that people believe again, people lying to themselves, believing, right? Because mm-hmm. you have to believe, you have to lie to yourself to to believe something, right? Um, they think they need to send their kid, you know, 30 different kids to one adult. Mm-hmm. And then they expect that that this one adult is going to be able to teach 30 different kids. And another thing about learning is that learning can't be forced. You know what I'm saying? The minute learning becomes forced, it's not fun anymore because learning should be fun. If you ask me, you know, I have a two year old and she wants to do everything. She, you know, she wants to do it herself. She like she loves learning. You know what I'm saying? She, and then it's like the schools take that from us. They make us hate learning. Because again, they're forcing it. And anything, and it's not just when it comes to learning it. When anything is forced, you don't want to do it anymore. It kind of loses its taste. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. You know, everything should be, volu- you know, through volunteerism and you having the want. When you have the want to learn something, best believe you're going to learn it. You know, but you got to have that want first. And it's, I've seen it's only a, bunch a matter of, of time after that. Videos from homeschool children who talk about this and they talk about how uh, they're what their parents do for them is giving them the freedom basically to design their curriculum based around the things they're interested in. So the parent just facilitates the education based on what they see the kid is naturally interested in anyway. Exactly. So I was watching one, this guy, you know, he's now he's in his 20s and he was talking about when he was in homeschool and how he got real interested in ancient Rome just randomly as an 11 year old, something I think maybe the the gladiators or something that piqued his interest. And so his parents helped him uh, research it to the point that, you know, he, he had a self-directed, very in-depth knowledge of ancient Rome as a yeah. child, just based on him being interested in it. And then later exactly. on, he got, in, he got into farming. He got really good at gardening. Uh, he started making his own essential oils and made his own business. And he was uh, making his, his own money at like age 13, 14. And now he's... It's had, you know, has significant um, success in several right. businesses uh, in his mid twenties, and I see this over and over again with homeschooling. Um, the children are much more successful in pretty much every facet of life. The, the only one they ever question is that they're always wondering about their socializing skills. It's like, oh, I'm not going to school, and I see in movies how kids are in school, and. Some of them actually will a- attend public school for a, a time to get that experience and see what it is like. And most all of them find that they, they don't enjoy school, just like you're saying, they find it too standardized. Um, it's too rigid. The kids... Too they, robotic, basically. Yeah. <laughs> they were concerned that maybe the kids would know certain things that they didn't know and they'd be embarrassed. And a lot of them have found that, nope, nope, they're, <laughs> the things that they found, um, if anything, they knew more than the public school kids. And in my experience, whenever I, because I was public schooled, whenever I ran across a homeschool kid, I was always shocked at how intelligent and well-mannered they always, like those are the two things that always stuck out to me. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, oh, they're way more polite than the the kids I'm used to. And they're also pretty pretty freaking intelligent uh, because you didn't think that they were, you know, the the public school wisdom was that the homeschool kids were like um, rednecks or something, like they were gonna be uh, dumb and socially awkward. Right, right. I mean, that's what they portray not. on TV too, usually. Mm, so it kind of turns mm. people off to even doing that. Mm-hmm. Like you see TV shows, cartoons, stuff like that. They always portray, you know, stuff like that. Kind of. You made a good out. point so, about sending thirty kids to one adult and thinking that that's gonna be better than having. A kid with two, like their own parents, two adults yeah. uh, that well, love them. To one kid, you know. Or, yeah, <laughs> that love them. That actually want to, um, you know, do, do the best for this one individual. Like, I, I think homeschooling is far superior to any other kind of of schooling. Like, you can have tutors uh, and bring them home if for certain specialized <laughs> subjects, and I think that works way better than the classroom setting and the big public school setting that is. Yeah. Um, you know, been exported yeah. the world over now. Yeah, and even that's rooted to the economy because nowadays both parents have to work, right? So who's going to teach the kid if they wanted, if they even wanted to do homeschooling, right? right so right. even the system is rigged so that we send our kids to school. 
They mm. want us to send our kids to school because obviously they brainwash us. That's where they brainwash us. You know, and in so many places, teacher, they don't allow yeah. homeschooling. They they exactly. force that's you to true. send them to public school too, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, luckily, where I'm at, um, right here in California, you're allowed to homeschool, um, mm. but you have to do it through their curriculum. You know, so so you have to follow their they're basically their their steps and mm-hmm. you have to teach them this first and this so so i'm gonna have to look into that a little bit bit more because obviously mm-hmm. i don't agree with a lot of the subjects that are taught in school yeah. so hopefully i'm able to find like a loophole you know something yeah because i know that like once you register your kids to schools you're basically making a contract with them and mm-hmm. now you have to right so but that's the thing i don't know if you have to make this contract with the schools once they hit a certain age i'm not i haven't really done my research on that yet but but eventually, I'm gonna have to because obviously, I'm I'm completely against the school curriculum and how they teach. You know, it's I mean, everybody that came across this subject would know that. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty obvious. So, so you are planning to try and find a way to homeschool? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna homeschool. I'm just gonna try to like not teach her like every subject. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. like especially if she's not interested in it and it, yeah. it doesn't affect, it doesn't really help her. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, language math you know all these things are kind of a necessity right now you know just to to get around life you know going going anywhere talking to anyone right you need basic language skills and and math skills but that's something that's gonna happen naturally if you ask me she's gonna learn this basic stuff just from her just being around you know me and, and me and my wife natalie you know she's gonna pick up language she's gonna pick up basic math eventually you know counting is is everywhere you know there's stuff everywhere is, you know, counting is inevitable. We're, it's just, but, um, but yeah, you know, yeah, hopefully, you know, I'm able to find like some kind of loophole, you know, so, but, um, but yeah, uh, going back to the economy, um, another thing about the economy real quick, if it's not rooted in something real, in other words, something of value, mm. that's when it's literally a rigged economy. So if you ask me, there could be other forms of currency. Not not just this obviously fake, you know, uh, printing out of thin air, right? Mm-hmm. One form of currency, I believe that it's universal, right? And it has a lot of value will be water. Mm. Water could be used as a source of, of currency, you know what I'm saying? But then you think about it, well, water has a lot of weight, right? How can you transfer water, you know, to make trades, right? And that's where I, I think gold, that's the reason why gold was used in the beginning, because it's an actual substance from the earth, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not, it, obviously, we don't use or eat wa- uh, gold like we do water, mm-hmm. but it's a good substitute that you could carry around with you when you travel. Because you can't carry like 100 gallons of water with you to trade when you go to another, you know what I'm saying, town. So it, yeah. it's better to carry like 10 grams of gold, you know what I'm yeah. saying, to do that. It just facilitates facilitates the trade aspect of the current of currency, you know, of valuables. You right. know what I'm saying? So an economy, if you ask me, it should be rooted with that has something of value you know what i'm saying something real some some, some yeah. objective you know what i'm saying so mm. I, I think uh that's a, a a way i think we could go towards you know if we want to get out of this you know fake currency that that, that we have now you know it How almost could, has uh, to go back something to, as yeah. plentiful as water be commodified into a monetary system like you're saying um, would would you have to have water credits or something? Because eventually, wouldn't you still have to end, like, because you said you can't just carry around gallons and gallons of water for yeah. every interaction. <laughs> eventually, do you think even that would fall into the same problem of needing some kind of symbolic currency? And then that symbolic currency inevitably leads down the same path that we're, we're at now? Right. Well, Water was just an example, but it literally goes back to just straight up trade. You know how back in the days it was just supposedly it was just trade. Um, um, it was no currency. It was just 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 trade, right? Of of of, of, of valuables or whatever you had. So, um, like water wouldn't be the only thing that, that can be. Obviously, herbs. You know, mm. herbs will be something that will be high in value. Um, medicinal herbs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. That's the thing, though. When it again, the when it comes down to it, I believe water, food, and shelter. We should we have to figure out a way to be able to to get those things on our own. If you ask me, mm. again, those are the necessities. 
um, water, food, and, and shelter too. You know, you want to keep yourself warm in the cold and, you know, cool when, when it's hot. So, so I think those are, are key things that we should strive to go towards that, that everybody will have access to, right? Because before when there was rivers, before the dams, you know, you know, before the city took over all the water, you know, I'm assuming everybody had access to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, part of the control um, of the government is taking control of the water and the land. Because right. now by controlling the water and the land, now you're controlling the food as well. Because you need, you need land and water to grow food. So, so by controlling these two main aspects is how they're able to control our lives, you know? So we need to go back to, to the fundamentals, if you ask me, you know? You know, food for and, everybody, water for everybody, you know? And, and, then, and, and then build an economy after that, if we wanted right. to. You know? And wouldn't you say that uh, food, water, and shelter could all, in a way, be combined into the the one aspect of land because if if everyone had enough land then you would be able to have all three of those and if the government yeah. prevents people in any way uh, through taxation or through eminent domain or through inflation like we're talking about to the point that you know your average person can't own land uh, mm -hmm. now we we're being deprived of absolute fundamentals and we're being made exactly. to work work our entire lives in this fake monetary system just to try and you know one day maybe i'll have a house you know right at 40 yeah. 40 years old like i still have to <laughs> think about that like most yeah. you know if, if we were living in a free society all i would have to have done at like 18 years old or younger whenever <laughs> whenever i felt ready i could just go off into the forest somewhere find some unused land get some friends together or do it myself and suddenly you know i'd have uh, a house and then I can start farming, you know, dig a hole, get some water, uh, you know, that that would be possible. And for sure, I'd do that rather than work uh, some slave nine job for yeah, nine to five for 40 years, just so maybe I could afford afford it sometime in the future. It's like, and, no, and I mean, I, and that's if it doesn't go up, the price of the house, like, <laughs> right? <laughs> it probably doubles. Exactly. And, no, and, yeah. and, and how many others are like that? I mean, most men, I think, think like like this. And so if we were given uh, or, or allowed uh, to have a sustainable amount of land at, at birth or at adulthood, you name it, you could have a government or some other organization there to help, uh, you know, work this. But so my idea is that, like the, the one thing a government should do, like if you're going to have a government at all, this is the thing is the government should divvy up the land to people there should be yeah. everyone should have the right to have some bit of land free exactly. for life because exactly. you know we're all born here Who, what is this ent entity called government that suddenly has the power to deprive us of the right to just be on earth exactly. and to build build <laughs> on this earth and to live in that thing that we built and to grow our own food on that area that we are exactly. living like so fundamental just like the flat earth we're talking about these things that are so fundamental but because we, we've been deprived of them for so long talking about them like we are now a lot of people it might be the first time they've ever thought about it like oh yeah exactly. the earth does appear to be flat and motionless <laughs> oh yeah. yeah the government could just provide everyone with free land untaxed for all on earth. I don't know if you've heard I mean, this. They could statistic. do whatever they want with it after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. It, it, it wouldn't even um, like take all of the land on earth. Like they say, if, if the population statistics are true and there's something like 7 billion people on earth, if you were to give everyone a quarter acre of land, which is enough to build a house and you could have food, yeah. I mean, whatever it's over that, ten thousand square feet yeah <laughs> you could all fit in texas like yeah. the entire world population would fit in texas and the rest of the world would still be pristine and untouched and so that's just a quarter acre and so, but i mean so you could give everyone an acre you could give everyone way more than that and what i'm right. thinking is you don't have to give anything because there's so much pristine land out there all yeah. you really need is the freedom to allow people to pick their own land and then exactly. as long as they are uh only tending to as much land as they can physically use, use 
themselves, you know, and produce things for, then that, you know, that's fine. Like, well, that's fair, their fair game, game then. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And I think if, so, if we had the freedom yeah. to do that, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't the world be in such a uh, totally different uh, situation? Like you said, we wouldn't have an economy based on all these necessities because necessities would just be taken care of like they should be. And then yeah. the, the rest of the economy could be based on, you know, goods and services that people want to provide. Want. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Want rather than need, like you said. Exactly. No, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, about land, uh, real quick. Um, one square mile is uh, 640 acres. One square mile, right? Oh. So if we were to divide that acre in half, like half an acre, right? And each person got a half an acre of land, mm -hmm. there would be 1,280 people uh, in one square mile that could fit with a half acre of land each. Now, the state of Texas is over 260,000 square miles. So based on what they're telling us, technically, you could fit 340, over 340 million people in Texas with a half acre of land. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the whole U.S. population can live in the state of Texas with a half acre of land each. You know what I'm wow. saying? Just, just to basically debunk this whole overpopulation, you know, bullshit. You know, and this is right. basic math. You know, anybody can do. You can Google this stuff and and figure it out for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. But, but yeah, if you ask me about the land as well, we don't have the right to own land, but we all, nobody has the right to own land, but we all have the right to use it, which goes mm. back to what you were saying, that if you were going to use a whole acre of land and actually use it, then yeah, fair game. You mm. know what I'm saying? Because I guess it's not nobody yours, should be, right? It's not your it's, land. Exactly. It's until you until you end up using it. When you're done using it, if you move somewhere else, guess what? Now that land is open for someone else if they exactly. want to come in and work that land. We're supposed to work the land, if you ask me, wherever yeah. we're at, whether right. it's fixing your house, your your garden, you know, whatever it is. We yeah. don't own it. We're just experiencing it and just using it for the time we're alive here. Because even our yeah. time here is very limited. You know what I'm saying? Right. A hundred, a hundred years if you're lucky, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, you know, time, time flies, too. So another reason why, you know, I kind of felt the need to go out and, and, and talk to people, you know, and and go out in public is because our time here is very limited. You know, my time here is going to be very limited. And, you know, every day I'm getting older, you know, and, and at time is just passing us by. Life is just passing us by, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if we don't take action now, it's only going to get worse, you know, but it's never too late. Don't get me wrong. It's never too late, but we don't want, we don't want to prolong this. I mean, I don't want to prolong this, if you ask me. I mean, why would we, right? We're living in hell, literally. <laughs> why would we prolong it? You know, mm. it's, you know, life sucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that's what's made you an activist, right? I mean, I, yeah. I put out a video called, uh, what is it, Truther Depression Recovery. And uh, right. I was advocating for activism as a solution to depression uh, for right. truthers. Right. Because uh, right. w one thing that happens when people come to all of this knowledge and you realize mm -hmm. how many, which ways you're being fucked from every other angle, it's depressing to no end and, and to know how little you seemingly can do about it. But then right. if you get out there and say, screw it, I'm going to see what I can do. It's really empowering, encouraging, inspiring, and it absolutely changes the world. And it doesn't take that long. Like I've, I've found out for myself, you know, because I, this is the path I've taken as well. Basically I, started researching all this information. I, for me, it was 9-11. It angered me to screams and tears on multiple occasions, just the fact that this is the world I'm living in, like this is what I was born right. into. I have to live the rest of my life like this, like this is, you know, oh my God. And it, you know, and, oh, and what am I gonna do? I'm gonna teach English, that's what I was doing at the time. I was gonna teach a language for the rest of my life or something, like, no, this, this information, this it's so important and empowering and suppressed and censored. And it's exactly what people need. And it, not just flat earth, but yeah, veganism, the cons all these conspiracies, spirituality information that's been suppressed from us. There's so much, and it is on, in big part, the education quote unquote system that's doing this. They're, they're indoctrinating us into certain ideas rather than giving us the freedom to decide our own curriculum and figure out what the truth is for ourselves. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, again, they they obviously know, you know, that how the mind works. Obviously, they, you know, they, they did a lot of experiments and tests, you know, 
before they implemented, you know, the school system. If you ask me, they just didn't randomly, you know, okay, mm-hmm. we're going to open up schools now. You know what I'm saying? They actually, mm-hmm. you know, they have to have had a plan and then and they're, and they're carrying it out as we speak, you know, still. So, so obviously they're, they've been taking action for a long time, you know, and if, you know, with every action, there's a reaction, you know, it's like the cause and effect type of thing. Mm-hmm. So what I'm doing now, I'm taking action as well. Cause again, if we don't take action, things are just going to get worse because they're taking action. They're making sure that they're, they're, they want, they're pushing the curriculum and, you know, everything they want to push. So right. people like me and you that realize this, we have to take action as well if you want things to change. You Absolutely. Know? You know, for every action, there's a reaction. Even this conversation that's happening is happening because of the actions I took. You know, you, you felt the need, you know, to reach out to me and I really appreciate that and, and to have this chat. So, I mean, so right. anybody watching this, you know, the best thing you could do is to take action as soon as possible. I mean, because time is just passing us by. People ask me all the time, Eric, do you think that the flat earth is ever going to get out there? Do you think that it's ever going to reach the mass consciousness? I I get many versions of this question over and over again. And the only answer I can think to give people is it's, you know, whether the answer is yes or no, whether we do create a mass awakening to this, this and other important subjects, or if it's swept under the carpet, like in the 19th century flat earth renaissance was, is completely up to us, awakened activists, and our activism or lack thereof. And so it's incredibly important to get involved. I mean, at least open your mouth, speak out, or some people, some people um, can't speak out for, for various reasons because you know, job situation or whatnot, yeah. or they or they don't want to directly do activism. But there's also right. indirect ways that you can do anonymous activism, exactly. and and that will also really make you feel better, and genuinely help. So I mean, you're, it's yeah. a win-win. You're making yourself yeah. feel better by doing this activism rather than just sitting there stewing about how awful the world is. And then mean, meanwhile, you are genuinely, positively contributing something to, to the world and, and changing that situation. And exactly. the more you do it, the more feedback you get about how the situation's being changed and how you're helping and everything. And again, winfinity, win-win. It just, you just keep feeling better about the fact that, yeah, I mean, all I got to do is keep doing what I'm doing. It's like a mm-hmm. snowball rolling down the mountain kind of effect. Yeah. The more of us just keep on doing this, you realize the truth. Okay, well, now I'm going to tell someone else the truth. I'm going to make little business cards and leave them at uh, phone booths or whatever. You know, whatever you think of to spread important information is creating is, is creating this. The, I was going to say new world is the <laughs> you know the <laughs> new new world that we want, not the new world order yeah. that they're they're trying yeah, to, to build. offer to us, right? <laughs> right, yeah. But uh, let's say a new world that we are actively creating based on uh, living in the truth that we're finding, rather than all these lies right. that they're trying to deceive us into believing. No, oh, right, yeah. right, right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. No, another thing. Um. I actually went through it myself, the depression you're talking about. I did, see, I did watch your video and I completely related to, mm-hmm. to it. Um, not only do you feel better, but you actually learn a lot about yourself and others. But by learning a lot about yourself, you automatically learn about others. Because again, we're all inherently the same. We're all human beings. We all have the same five senses. We all have a brain. You know what I'm saying? So when, you, again, learning about yourself, you're going to learn a lot about how other people, you know, act or, or you know how, how how they take this information and, and again the more you you try and, and spread awareness the more you're going to learn this you're going to get better you know what yeah. i'm saying practice makes perfect right so it's, right. it's also you got to put it into practice and you're only going to get better you know so if, you know people shouldn't be scared to go out and get ridiculed you know because i mean the ridicule is already out there anyway what mm-hmm. you should do is just you know i i like to think i have thick skin you know uh you know words you know, name calling, all that to me, it doesn't really affect me. If anything, it makes me laugh. And it just shows me that you're feeling some type of way that you need to resort to name calling. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just funny to me. <laughs> so, right. it's, it's exposing them more than it's uh, doing any exactly. sort of effect on you. Exactly. It just shows me that you're, 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 uh, what's the word, um, insecure, basically, yeah. about right. your opinions and your thoughts, basically, that you have to attack me personally. 
you know, you're right. literally going off topic to attack me now, <laughs> you know, and, and again, you, you learn all this, you know, when you go out and speak to people, you know, so I, just so people know, you know, I was so antisocial, you know, I was the, when I went to school, I sit in the back, you know, I didn't want to get noticed, you know, I just under the radar, you know, cause I, I didn't like socializing yet. And I still, you know, I, I, now that I've, you know, started doing activism, it's, I kind of enjoy it now. You know, again, mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy it at first. I, I was complete opposite. Mm -hmm. But now I enjoy talking. I enjoy sharing this with people, you know, the, the, the globe earth, why, you know, and, and seeing people's expressions, you know, they're priceless. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, there's, to be honest, there's nothing else I could see myself doing right now than, than doing activism. You know, I, I mean, if there's something else that's more effective, I would love to hear it. Right. And it's, you know, other stuff that I could be doing. But to be honest, going out to the public and speaking to them directly, giving them you know, the facts mm -hmm. and it's, you know, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. No. And another thing about these uh, controlled debates, I will call them because obviously uh, usually is a, a, a separate platform and, and usually they try to get like the truth or angry. That's what I've noticed in, in a lot of these uh, debates, right? Mm -hmm. They try mm -hmm. to get the, the, the truth or angry and then just basically frustrated to the point where they basically just make it seem like, oh, look, this is this guy's just angry. He doesn't really have points. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he's just acting on emotion. And because they're always usually calm, right? They always talk, you know, professional and they stay calm. They don't really raise mm -hmm. their voice. They're just playing on people's emotions, you know? Right. And, and that works, especially if a person doesn't, is not really grounded with logic and common sense. They're going to mm -hmm. be swayed by, by emotional crap like that. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Because now, yeah, most people nowadays are too emotionally unstable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ask me, you know, who else is emotionally unstable? Children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that literally tells us that we have grown adults everywhere that didn't grow mentally. Because, right. every, you know, the majority of people are emotionally unstable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it just shows that they haven't grown up mentally. That's right. Know? And people have commented a lot about the fact that, like, the new newer generation, the millennials, are, like, the offended generation. And everybody's tri <laughs> triggered, right? That's a that's a new buzzword you hear all the time now. In the yeah. 80s or the 90s, I never heard people talking about being triggered. <laughs> Just right. it wasn't even a th it wasn't a word people used. Nor was being offended such a such a sin. <laughs> like oh, I'm offended. Right. It was more laughable. Yeah. It was like okay, well, and and so <laughs> what? <laughs> You're be offended then. But nowadays, yeah. being offended, like oh, now you, you need to be it's canceled. Like, it's a crime you now, need to right? Be censored. <laughs> yeah, it's a crime. To, <laughs> offend anyone how dare you offend someone with something you say <laughs> right yeah it just it just shows the the state of you know the state of the world we're in mm. right you know just people soft. not only are they yeah yeah too soft exactly a snowflake society i would say yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um a lot oh uh, speaking of that i've been noticing that a lot with uh the what do you call them the first amendment audits right the civil mm. rights movement happening here yeah, um, I saw you doing some oh of those. Oh my God, people get offended just a guy recording randomly, not even them, just recording randomly, panning. And if they so happen to be in that shot, like they get offended by that, not even words. You know what I'm saying? Like they just right. get offended because the camera panned over. And they're out in public, by the way. There's like 100 cameras, where, you know, where they're at. And it's just, it's, it's just ridiculous, man. Like the human psychology, how, how bad it has gotten, you know, with people nowadays, it's just crazy literally crazy i've you know? seen that as well with the first amendment videos they'll be yeah. in a mall or somewhere and they're being <laughs> filmed on cctv cameras you can point it out to them like there's one in that corner yeah. see it there there's yeah. one over there yeah. there's one over there but the one in your hand that's the one that, that matters it offends like, me no. <laughs> yeah that one offends me <laughs> no yeah no, yeah it's pretty crazy so uh, actually you know i'm watching you know these first amendment artists because i mean they blew up in the last couple of years two three years and I just, uh, you know, I'm again, I'm a fast learner. I was like, oh my God, this is a way that I can, I can use to spread, you know, the message that I have. So I actually do First Amendment audits as well. Um, so I'm taking advantage of the fact that that's kind of like a thing right now that, that a lot of people are looking into. That we have the right to be filming out in public and, you know, basically have yeah. conversations. People that want to have conversations. So I'm actually going to government buildings and doing First Amendment audits. And when I when I do the, you know, the tour of the facility, I usually step outside, set up my tripod, and then do my question there to see if anybody wants to have a chat. So, right. 
so so I'm taking the First Amendment audits and I'm doing my own thing with them as well. So I've seen that. That's cool. Yeah. We made a, a crossover genre, a crossover conspiracy yeah. <laughs> flat Earth genre with First First, uh, first Amendment, Amendment <laughs> audits slash yeah. flat Earth activism. Yeah, that's neat. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen nobody else even come close to do something like that. So I figured, eh, why not? I mean, all the right. tools are there. You know, might as well take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, over time, have you found that you get like at first, were you pretty nervous to start? How was your first time going out? <laughs> how did you feel and, and so, how has it been since then? Right. So it's almost in April will be a year since I started doing this. Uh, so um, last year, 2022, I started. It. But to be honest, I was planning on starting like in 2019. That's when I printed out the flyers. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly how I was going to present it. So I, I was just going to pass out flyers. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. even expect to make a YouTube channel or even do street interviews or any of that. I printed out my flyers around 2018, 2019. And I just, in my head, I was just going to pass them out, go out in public and just pass them out to people and let people, you know, come to the conclusion, you know, on their own, on their own time, right? Yeah. Um, but I was sitting on, you know, because again, I'm so antisocial, you know, again, it was, I had to be completely out of my comfort zone to actually go out and do that. So yeah, the first time I went out, which was like two years after I printed the flyers, maybe two, three years. I was nervous, I'm not gonna lie, you know, being, you know, an introvert, you know, going out, you know, setting up a table, you know, to, to, to try to get random people to talk to you. It's not, it's not easy at first, but it does get easier, that's for sure. You know, I still get a little nervous, um, you know, when I go out, but to be honest, it's almost gone already. You know, I'm cool. just having fun with it now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it actually, you know, it's a good feeling to, you know, to go out and do this. You know, when I come home, I do feel somewhat accomplished, you know, because to be honest, when I, before I did activism, you know, I like, you know, I would get depressed. Like, I'd be like, damn, man, there's, there has to be something I can do. You know, I need to do something, you know, because if I don't do anything, you know, things are just going to just going to get worse. So. So, again, I kind of do it for myself uh, as well. You know, just kind of like, a, like oh, yeah. the therapeutic for me, you know, yeah, yeah kind of, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so it really helps me, you know, just helps me just be, you know, it helps me, you know, I don't feel so bad about, about all the shit going on, even though it's still bad. But knowing that I'm able to do something, you know, it's a good feeling, you know, regardless. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Another thing that fuels me a lot, believe it or not, is watching all these trolls, all these fake debates online, to be honest. Yeah. When I hear people just talking shit, that, that fuels me to want to go out more. Like, oh, my God, these motherfuckers are, <laughs> are fucking, you know, like, oh, my God. Like, it just fuels me to go out and, and actually, you know, do more activism, and, you know. Cool, so, man. And that's, so I just that's what, turn that, that around. <laughs> exactly. That's what you want. Like, um, transmutation, right? Take that negative energy and find a way yeah. to channel it into something positive like this. It's way better exactly. than just stewing on it in a lonely depression and wondering what I could do. Everyone needs yeah. to find that thing. And it doesn't have to be the same thing for everyone. Like I said, I've always wanted to be a writer since I was a little kid. I've written little stories. And when I came across this, well, what's the thing that made sense for me to do? Write books. And so yeah. I'm writing books about it. And, and uh, you know, other people, what, whatever your forte is or whatever way that would work best for you, um, yeah, you just get out there and do it. And yeah, it's really yeah. important. Like, you know, if you have that question, because so many people have that question, Eric, uh, is, is it ever going to be a mass awakening? Is the world ever going to come to these truths? Are we ever going to have real freedom and, and truth reign in the world? It's like, well, it's up to you. <laughs> that depends on you. What are you doing today, tomorrow, and the next day to make sure that that does happen? And if the answer is nothing, then so sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but <laughs> you know, who else are we to rely on but each other? Like. These, these yeah. rich psychopaths that have had control of the world for so long are now basically just consolidating uh, that control and, and continuing it. Yeah. it change, change certainly isn't going to come from up on high. Change could only right. come from the grassroots and from those of us that feel this way, those of us that feel downtrodden and um, the, that we are uh, victims of this system. Um, it's, it's up to us to somehow find a way while we're you know making our way in this slave system you know most people don't even have the time to to watch these even documentaries <laughs> or, or read a book exactly no, it's yeah. so difficult to make a living like we were saying but if if you if you can if you have some free time 
um, you know, what's better than this that you could do for yourself and for the world? Like we're saying, it really does benefit you and the world to do this kind of activism because, and, and if you don't, what kind of legacy are we leaving for your children and for the next generation, for our grandchildren? I mean, <laughs> they're going to ask, like, what were you doing when the New World Order was forming mommy and daddy? <laughs> what, what did what did you do during the pandemic? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wear a mask on, just do what I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I socially distanced uh, and uh, got triple boosted, and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> wore a mask for three years. <laughs> Why? Why? Right, huh? um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no real answer to that. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, another thing that really, um, I'm kind of going off topic, but I feel like it's related. Um, mm. that's helped me out kind of come out of my shell. Um, it's psychedelics, um, mushrooms mm. in specific. Um, I know you obviously experimented with them, you know, yeah. in, in your videos about it and I actually didn't, um, try them till like my mid twenties, you know, that's mm -hmm. when I first, first mid to late twenties. And, uh, to be honest, one of the best decisions I've ever made, like everything I heard about, you know, magic mushrooms and all this is literally just propaganda everything negative especially that you hear about them mm -hmm. it's just propaganda I've, I've, I've microdosed you know a lot of you know more than i can count over 20 times and not once have i had a bad experience mm -hmm. you know so i've had three uh experiences where i did take a higher dose you know mm -hmm. around you know not a micro and i would say in those three experiences i learned so much about myself mm -hmm. that i don't even know that if I ever, it ever came to those conclusions on my own. I mean, I, I like to think I would have, but mm -hmm. either way, these things are boosters. Like if you want, uh, if you want help, like rationalizing your own thoughts, learning about yourself, about your emotions, about, you know, anything that has to do with the self. Psychedelics is my best, um, my best, uh, what, what's the word? I, I, my recommendation basically, mm -hmm. you know, for someone that's in this journey of truth and wants a little boost you know what i'm saying again they're not needed i don't think they're needed mm -hmm. but they're there just in case you know you lose yourself or or you know you want a little a little it's guidance a, right a tool that can help you on <laughs> exactly. your exactly so there's and a so, reason why they're they're illegal you know like mm. really illegal you know if you ask me mm. <laughs> now how did how how do you feel that they helped you because people that have never tried <laughs> them They'll be like, right. what, a psychedelic? So you mean that you just saw a bunch of crazy colors and, and it looked, <laughs> looked like the walls were breathing and then suddenly you right. you realized inner truths about yourself? Like, how'd that happen? How, how <laughs> so does it work? It's almost, yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, to be honest, it's I think it's impossible to explain it in words. You would just mm -hmm. have to try it, but, but I'll try to give my best explanation. So I will talk about the one of those three experiences where I, I would call them breakthroughs um, um, because, again, I didn't get this light show like everybody says, you know, like I, I, I do notice like everything does get brighter just because your senses do get more amplified. You know, that's odd. You know, your senses get amplified. You're breathing. You're breathing way more. You know, your, your sight becomes clearer. That's why, you know, everything looks brighter and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But ultimately, that wasn't like what what changed, like what, what what they did for me was more like. I mean, it's in the name. It's psychological. You know, that's what mm -hmm. they call psychedelics. Mm -hmm. It was a, uh, it was more of a real, real like when you're, um, like in a high dose, you can only be in the moment, mm -hmm. like, like you, you can't really think about anything else mm -hmm. but the moment. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're, you're literally in the moment. You're analyzing the reality, your, your, your body, yourself, and you realize that you don't really know shit. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. at least that's what I came to. Like, holy shit, all these ideas about what, you know, what makes up this reality and all those just are just ideas because you start thinking about how did they prove that, <laughs> you know? So, again, you start thinking deep thoughts about this reality, about, you know, the fundamentals. That's what I noticed, that it brings you back to the fundamentals of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of this experience. And, and I think that, you know, that's one that it stems from that, you know, yeah. just... Uh, fundamentals common sense logic you just it's just if you want to exercise your brain that's the best way to exercise your brain if you ask me you know what i'm saying 
And it's not necessarily just a visual or a psychological no. phenomenon, but there, there's like an emotional aspect to it as well. Yeah, what, exactly. When I first took a high dose of mushrooms, I spent <laughs> seven hours laughing <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my roommate. In, in oh, my somewhere. God, I've had, I've had an experience like that, too. Oh, my God. I, like, <laughs> you were laughing so much that you, like, you, like, it's just... Like, it's crazy. Like, the laughter just pours out of you. Like, it's crazy. I've, I've had an experience like that. And it's, it was one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had, by the way. It was you know, and, nothing like I've ever experienced before. It was great. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and so what is that? But it's just like a... So it's allowing you, or me, for instance, in that situation, to remove whatever other barriers I would have to just being completely blissed out in that moment. Because it was a, a, a nice moment. I was there with my friend, my roommate, who I'd recently met, and we were going to have a mushroom trip. And we went out next to the pond in this nice field on a beautiful day. And we just sat there talking, shooting the shit. And it ended up being seven hours of mostly just laughing, kind of yeah. rolling. Oh, that's the other thing. Physical sensations rolling around, like just feeling the grass and the <laughs> sun on my face. Right, and right. Interacting with insects. It was just absolutely <laughs> enthralling as like being a kid again. Um, exactly. Yeah. And so it was, it was able to remove all those layers of, I don't know what, that we Ideas accru accrue so. yeah, over, over uh, as we become adults. And, and it's like you're able to just strip it all away and just be a, a curious kid again or just be in the completely in the moment. Yeah. And, you know, and I have had snippets of a bad trip. So I know what people are feeling yeah. when what, what it is, is you'll you'll get consumed by some negative thought. And because yeah. mushrooms will kind of put <laughs> you so into your moment that yeah. now you'll just, oh, oh, no, now I'm in this dark moment and I can't stop thinking about it. Um, right. And so my recommendation for people is always, if you're going to do mushrooms, have have the setting, the environment, and other tools nearby to help you. So, for instance, I'll always have um, my favorite music on hand. Um, right. You know, I usually have uh, I usually like to do it during the day rather than at night, so that you've got right. sunlight and stuff rather than the you know <laughs> darkness, because that can be right. scary. Um, so the little yeah. thing you can you can do to or I'll have uh, like uh, some cool psychedelic movies queued up that I can turn those on at any time to take my mind off of wherever it might have gone and I watch Fern Gully instead or something. Uh, so um, and another thing you said you microdosed before going into any of the high doses. That's another yeah, yeah. really good suggestion. For people, for new people, to, yeah, yeah. Rather than just taking a three to five gram dose, start with a half or a single gram and slowly work your way up from there, so that right. you can get used to what it's kind of like before you get right. thrown into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> because you can never get used to it. Even now, right. I'm still like, oh, do I want to take that high dose right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I still, you know, it's 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 good though. At the end of the day, um, I never regret it. Any any dose I've taken before. Um, and uh, it's funny because I remember now why the laughter kicked in for me. Um, it was it was the realization of how simple life actually is and how we're making it difficult, mm. you know, just because people are stubborn, obviously, and people are not grounded, you know, to the fundamentals. Life is hard because of that, because life should be easy. And that realization is what, you know, triggered my, my laugh attack. So <laughs> how ridiculous, you know we're living based off of nothing like there's no real reason why we should be living this way based, other than that we just ignorant literally so and it's funny because right after the laugh attack i actually had a breakdown so i started thinking like you said i started thinking about the negatives of the world and how people are suffering you know homelessness drug addiction so i kind of contemplated it and i just poured tears just mm. i couldn't stop myself from crying like it was just the most I've ever cried as well. Mm. All, you went from the most I've ever laughed mm. to the most I've ever cried. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I still, you know, I learned a lot from both experiences, from both of those extremes. Um, and yeah, you know, it just, just made me a better person, you know, if you ask, you know, if you ask I think me. Maybe we've touched on on actually what it is that, that mushrooms or some psychedelics can do is that 
so the word psychedelic like is that it has to do with psychology and the exactly. eventual revelations that people will talk about the epiphanies they have are usually psychological but maybe what the yeah. thing is doing is it's removing these emotional barriers that we've created around certain things in our life that prevent us from seeing that psychology so it's like allowing us yeah. to delve into our subconscious realm that usually we have a bunch of emotions padding and protecting us from and that mm -hmm. thing just strips them away and allows us to feel things that we haven't felt since childhood and maybe even exactly. think of things we haven't thought since then or, or never even yeah oh, yeah that's yeah. true yeah uh, another quick thing about that i've learned is um especially on a high dose is how obviously people put their feelings first you know, mm. their emotions first, you know, that's why people are emotionally unstable, but emotions or, you know, feelings, if you ask me, they should be secondary to common sense. Mm -hmm. So common sense, logic, you know, reason should be first and then emotions should follow, you know, right. should complement that, you know, because if you're acting on emotion, obviously you're, you're just going to be all over the place, you know? Yes. So another thing I've learned a lot is, you know, getting my emotions in check, you know, not get so emotional about things people say or, you know, you know, you, you learn all this, you know, and uh, yeah, it just really helped me a lot. Um, I, I And another thing I, I realized, you know, that I think the reason why we, because I, I was thinking, like, why do we have emotions, right? Like, what's the point of them? If you ask me, it's to learn how to treat each other. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If we didn't have emotions, people will be treating each other like, like crap because mm -hmm. you don't feel bad. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If, if, you, if you hit someone or, or take advantage of someone, you know, or, you know. If you don't have emotions, you won't be able to correct, you know, mm. choices that, you know, that could be detrimental to others or stuff like that. I think it's just they're there to, to know so we can learn how to treat each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? yeah the feedback mechanism to let us know yeah. how we're how we're doing in our interpersonal in way, yeah. interactions. Yeah. Yeah. That's why feeling guilty is very, you know, people that ignore that, you know, I think that's very bad, you know, because mm. you, you have that feeling for a reason of guilt. You know what I'm saying? Just like when you feel happy. You know, something made you happy, you know, and then that and something makes you sad, you know, you know what makes you sad now, you know. So again, you know, these emotions are there for a reason, you know, I think but I think they should be they they should remain secondary. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know, you want you want you wanna have common sense first, you know. Because again, a lot of people use emotion to take advantage of other people. For example, people that fake disabilities to, mm -hmm. to get money, for example, you know, they, they play on people's emotions, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of people that scam, for example play on people's emotions again if you're not well grounded you're gonna be swayed by that mm -hmm. you know so again emotions feelings should be secondary you know that's right if you yeah. allow your emotions to be you know in your brain if you if you think how you feel is more important than more whatever important. the whatever the truth is yeah. then your your life is gonna start to become more and more based around lies and delusions because mm -hmm. that that feel good you know, good feeling lies and delusions. There's so many issues now, especially political issues, that people, right. they, they're choosing what they think, what they believe the truth is, right. based on how that makes them feel. Exactly, yeah. And, and like you're saying, like, it's, it's a slippery slope and it's an easy thing to fall into. You want things that feel good to be true and you want things that feel bad to not be true. But sometimes that's just not the case. You know, sometimes there really are worldwide conspiracies to deprive you of your livelihood. Sometimes, okay. you know, your wife really is cheating on you. You didn't want to know it, but it's the truth. Do you want to just yeah. live in delusion for the rest of your life? Okay. Or would it be better <laughs> to know the truth? You know, And in most situations, if you, if you hold people's feet to the fire, they'll admit that they want to know the truth and they would rather go through whatever emotional upheaval they have to to know that truth but in day-to-day -day practice <laughs> is it that way because emotions are such a defense mechanism and the second people are confronted with these negative emotions rather than going through them and finding what the truth might be on the other side they might just turn right back around and deny that there's any truth to be found there because it's just too negative i don't want to go there I think there's a heck of a lot of that. Uh, I find so much of that in, for instance, the reincarnation soul trap uh, subject or the right. hollow, hollow hoax subject. There's a couple incredibly negative subjects that 
people, a lot of people won't even bother to research them just because the feeling of of the subject itself, whether no matter what they they find out from it, just going into it is all, or veganism. That's another one. Right. Just going right. into um, the fact that your daily food choices cause so much harm and torture uh, on this on, on this uh, plane that you know it's a lot of people don't even want to look at it and they have a mm-hmm. bunch of bunch of defense mechanisms and a bunch of ways to convince themselves not to look at it mm-hmm. I, I I think everyone owes it to themselves and the world to watch slaughterhouse footage if you're still a meat eater that was mm-hmm. what changed me I, right. I had a, enough compassion to actually confront myself with what I'm doing and decide that I don't want to be a part of it. And and I did the research to find out that I can still be completely healthy and healthier, whoa, what a revelation that is, if I stop eating them. Most people right. are indoctrinated with this belief that you must eat animals and animal products to be healthy. And so they right. do this evil thing that they think is a necessary evil and uh, you know, allow the murder of innocent creatures just so that they can survive and get their protein or their creatine right. or, or whatever the, the heck they think is a essential yeah. nutrient that o- only exists in animal products. But when, <laughs> right. when, you, when you do the research, you find out that there is no such thing and you can be healthier and live longer uh, without these things in your life and you don't have to do the harm. So right. oh, oftentimes, yeah, yeah the, the, the negativity oftentimes is only a front and if we can break through that we can find a whole world of positive things we didn't know existed beyond this this really negative emotionally charged thing that is making us not look into a subject hey maybe maybe something great is on the other side of that you know people will often say that the the thing that you should do for personal development is whatever you're most afraid of whatever that thing is you least want to do um, so that, that's another piece of advice for anyone that maybe has found certain subjects that they don't want to be true. Because like we're saying, you know, right. you don't want something to be true. And then you let your emotions dictate okay. whether you even pursue that knowledge any further. You're like, I don't want it to be true and it's going to be negative. Forget <laughs> it. I'm not even going to find out. And then you, you remain ignorant about something that could be very important or empowering if you actually right. took the time with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I just uh, another thing, real quick too, about making people, you know, feeling uncomfortable or things that make them feel good. Going back to emotions, is uh, if you ask me, um, emotions or make or wanting to feel, and you just feel good, it's one of the main reasons people are just addicted. You know, have addictive tendencies. For example, right? They mm-hmm. eat me because it makes them feel good. You know. They, they do all these things just because they make, again, they're putting emotions first. That's what drives addiction. If you put emotions first, then you're most likely going to have you know, an addictive personality, you know, because you're just trying to fulfill those feelings, you know, you're not really thinking about the consequences, right? Mm. So a lot of the main things, in my opinion, that, you know, well, the reason why most crime happens is, is the need to fulfill addiction, addiction to sex, addiction to money addiction, you know, whatever that is, drugs, right? Crime, you know, if you ask me, being emotionally unstable, it's what leads to to crimes eventually, you know? Yes. Because, you know, you're trying to fulfill that, that feel good opposed to, you don't care about the victim. You just That's care right. about yourself and about feeling good, you know? So, so you it's know. It's not even necessarily of, about economic stability or economic situations yeah. too, because there's plenty of homeless people or um, you know, yogis in India and sadhus who live their entire lives with nothing but the clothes on their back and a bowl and a spoon or something, and they would never think of uh, stealing from somebody or doing anything. Causing any harm. Yeah. yeah, causing any harm. So it's not. It's not. You know, some people think like, oh well, you know, they they're deprived of this or that, and even even food. I mean, at, at some point, yeah, if you're if you're just stealing food and water, uh, I can start to understand things, but usually it's it's not that i mean almost yeah. never is it that it's it's greed and like you said it's emotion based and more often than not it's like uh, i think drugs are one of the main factors in crime a lot of people that are 
doing crimes are on drugs while doing the crime. Over 90%, or, if not all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or they're off of the drug and doing the crime so that they can afford to get back on it. So it still roots back to the drug. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's pretty crazy, you know, and, the, and a lot of people, for example, when you mention, oh, it's, it's the government, you know, bringing in the drugs. Mm. And it's like, again, most people won't even listen to stuff like that because, again, it's just the programming, you know, and because and again the the fight against against drugs right the war against drugs right and now now they're taking not only are they the ones providing it but now they're taking money as well and you know and they're the ones you know putting out all these drugs out there you know and and again creating a problem so that they can offer the solution you know that's, right, that's right. same tactics they use they've always used you know to control create the problem to then offer the solution so. simple simple three step process right Exactly. Create, yeah. create a problem and then garner the reaction that you want from the public so that they mm -hmm. cry for some solution, which was the exact thing that you wanted to implement in the first place. But you yeah. knew that without the problem and the reaction first, it wouldn't happen. They wouldn't want it. But now once yeah. they've scared them into uh, you know, wanting this new thing, now, now rather than forcing it on them, they request it from you. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Then that's called the Hegelian dialectic for anyone that hasn't heard it. Right. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah. It's it's just a trip, man. How seeing how how people, you know, behave and people, you know, it's just it's just pretty crazy, man. <laughs> Absolutely.